live at the Riverbank and tonight we are with Misha Paris. She is going to be forming on stage and we're going to catch up with her, find out exactly how she's doing. Uh, as well in light of the fact that we've just lost Prince as well, who's very dear to her. Um, you know, musically over the past 25 years, they've known each other. So we're so looking forward to speaking to Misha Paris. I hope you'll stay tuned to Trisha New Media for what's coming. See you soon. Oh my God. Come on, come in. Give me that B, baby. Well, welcome. How are you today? I'm good. I'm well. I'm not good. Glad to see you. Yeah. Um, but it's been a real roller coaster the imagine. last like two days. Yeah. Basically, we lost Prince, Prince yesterday. Mm. I got home from the gym, and the phone rang, and it was the BBC telling me. And um, then I was running up and down yesterday. Channel mm. Four, Newsnight. Radio 4, Capital Radio, I was everywhere yesterday yeah. before I got to Nottingham today, to the yeah. point where I had to, I had to, um, I had to pull all the things today, I couldn't yeah. do any more, you know, it's too much. It's just a bit much. Yeah. yeah, it's only today, like, this morning, I suddenly had a bit of a moment to think, yeah. And that's wow. when it really sank yeah. in, really it? Sank in. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw him last year, you yeah. know, and I just, I knew he looked a bit, he looked frail, mm -hmm. more than I've ever seen him before in the 25 years I've known him. Yeah. And I see him like every five, six years. Okay. But this time last year, he did look a bit frail, and I thought he's working too hard. Did he say that he was feeling a bit unwell? No, he, he was. was no, he was the same thing. old. You know, he's a, he's a quiet one. Yeah. He only says about three, four words. That's it. Well, so he does all the talking on stage. Great to see you. Well, it's a very That's it. <laughs> great to see you. That's it. That's it. That's it. The whole time. Oh yeah. Oh bless. We had a great relationship. Great to see you. That's it. <laughs> oh, Alright, so, um, sorry. Well, we were talking about Prince and. So, yeah, it was a bit of a shock. brought you from stage at one time, didn't he? When, well, when I was 18, I was 18 years old and I just signed to Ireland. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even put out my One Temptation yet, which was my first song. And I went to this um, concert to see him, and he literally, in the middle of the concert, said, We have Misha Paris here. She sings. You might not know who she is, but she sings. And you know, in all the years I've known him, I've never asked him how he do, yeah. right? And um, then he passed the mic, and then I started singing just on imagination, and he just went mental on the guitar. Next minute, bumped into him in LA six yeah. months later while I was doing David Letterman and all the, the, the album was blowing up in the states. You know, the first one, and I went to a place and I saw him, and his bodyguard said, "Prince is over there. He will say hi." I went over, went sat down, talked to him, and then he said to me, um, "You remind me of Shaka when she was young." Yeah. And that's it. I told you. That's yeah. what I did all the time. And that's it. Well, I really love you. I think you're amazing. I just can't believe that I'm talking to you right now. Thanks for calling me up that time. It was really great. And oh, it was lovely. I was like, so I was trying to. Yeah, yeah. Because he made you feel like you want to talk a lot because he wouldn't say anything. Yeah. So you feel really like, oh, I better keep talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, and, um, and I hope that one day that we can work together. And <laughs> he turned around and he went, and he goes, well, you know, I'd love to work with you, but. Um, I've got to do the Batman soundtrack. But when I finish that, I come right back to you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, great. I'll take, take your time. I hope it goes beginning. really well. <laughs> what an Go to the hotel. <laughs> yeah, I don't tell the man where I'm staying. I'm in the Sunset Marquee, right? Next morning, I get this ring, ring, phone, pick up the phone. Hi, ma'am. We have a call for you. Are, are you able to take it? I'm like, yeah, but who is it? Prince. I'm like, oh, for goodness sake. What do you mean, Prince? It can't be Prince on the phone. What are you talking about? And she goes, ma'am, would you like the car? You know, American. No yeah, sense of humor. Yeah. So I was like, okay, put it through. Hi, okay. this is um, Prince's manager, um, Farnoli, whatever his name was. And he says that Prince would like to send you some songs. He'd like to take a listen and tell him which ones you'd like. How did he know where I was staying, number one? Went downstairs, there was a whole rack of tapes, of tapes in those days. Chose the tune, called him up, told him which one I wanted. On a plane to Minneapolis, Paisley Park, in the studio with him, and Coffee and Cream. Do you remember Coffee and Cream, the girls, the twins? So in the studio, what was the atmosphere like? Well, first it's Paisley Park. Paisley Park is massive. It's like, it's all white. I mean, it, it, you know, sorry to say, but it doesn't look like Ikea. Yeah. But Ikea wasn't around then. It wasn't around then, so it was like, this, it was like Stanley Kubrick. Mm. 
you know the Odyssey? Yeah, space yeah. 2000, yeah. it's that vibe. Yeah. Okay. In the middle of a field, it's, Minneapolis is really like green, it's really like lots of, you know, and it's in the middle of nowhere. Mm. This, this white cube building, which is massive, like, hey, a, thanks, sure. like a pine wood. Sorry, sorry. Like pine wood and, and stuff, right? And then he comes in the <laughs> And then basically, so we, we um, and then he, he started playing me all these tunes and he said to me, um, um, you know, I've got a vault and I've got thousands of songs in this vault. And I'm like, wow, amazing. And he said, what do you think about this? I said, oh my God, <laughs> whatever it was. Next thing, genius again, genius again. Uh, what do you say? Every song the man played was insane. And I was just going, uh, he's a genius. I was like that. And, and um, yeah, and, and that was my experience with him. Then I saw him, I've been seeing him ever since. Yeah. And he never forget you, he always comes and says hi when he's in town. He's lovely, he was. He's going to be sadly missed. He is, he was a difficult guy, he wasn't easy. He only liked, he only, look, difficult in that he knew what he liked. Yeah. And he didn't mix his words. You know, if he liked you, you knew it. And if you didn't like you didn't hear from him. It's as simple as that. That's how it is. And, and he and he was a very big empowerer of women. You know, this is the first time I saw a, a female drummer, uh, Sheila E. You know, bless her. That's a good friend of mine too. She's amazing. Sheila's fantastic people. He made that happen. Candy Dolfer. He always big up the women. Gotta give it to Prince for that. He was one of the first to really have a female band. This guy was uh, visionary. You know, He's different. Um, and also just the fact that his music was just multifaceted and come on, you know, the guy's a technical genius. It was great. So it was it's a big loss. It's a big loss for music because we we've lost the great ones now. Yes, we have. The king, the queen and the prince. That's what I said. That's exactly what I said. Michael is the king, Whitney was the queen, the prince was prince. Yeah? And that's it. That's your lot. That's your lot. That's your lot. It's over. Well, and, and you know, you, you know, now we have to just look to the new generation and, and pray to God that, you know, sorry that, sorry that. What do you mean? He, it's sad that he hasn't got no children. That's the only thing. At least with Michael. Was running today. No, he lost. He lost one. He lost one. Yeah, so his legacy is just so no bad. No bad. No bad. No it's done. Shame, isn't it? So his music will live on with us sure. in, throughout our hearts, throughout the ears and stuff like that. And yeah. I'm sure you would attribute some things like that to him for a long time. Oh, yeah, forever. I mean, yeah, you know, he's, he's influenced music in such an amazing way. Um, it's a sad loss, baby. Yeah. It's really, there's nothing more to say. Well, I feel, so I, feel, I, feel, I feel your pain. I really do feel your pain. Yeah, because, you know, it's not easy when you just see the clothes. Mm. But, you know, as you said about him being multifaceted, you yourself have come from a gospel background. Sure. You grew up in the church, mm -hmm. again, singing in the choirs and stuff like that. Your grandma became your manager. Oh, pretty much. But what I wanted to ask you is, even though you've got a gospel sound, a gospel voice, gospel vibe, mm. is there any genre that you haven't done that you really <laughs> would have liked to have done not or even time. thinking about doing? Still yeah. time. I literally, it's funny because I'm doing more orchestral stuff. I did this um, with the, the Royal Philharmonic, I did a show with them in October and I did all the Bond songs and it was, oh my god, it was amazing. So going into more epic orchestral stuff, classical stuff, I, I'm, that's where I'm going as well. Still keeping it with all the other stuff as well, but I'm always trying to learn more, do new, work with, collaborate with, I'll always do that, I'm nuts. Because you've taken, you've been into a theatre, you've gone to West End, done all that. Like that. How yeah. does that feel? How did you oh. be able to do the, the, the um, two? For me, it was, I, I did it 20 years ago with uh, Mama on the Sing. That was wicked. Yeah. But I'm not really made for that, if I'm honest. It took me 20 years to go back to the theatre, and I just did Love Me Tender, which was brilliant. But I can't. Right. Not it's really. not really. I do it as one of yeah. here and there. I'll do a bit. Of, if it's me playing a singer, and it's me, I'll do it. That's fine. But if it's me trying to be someone else, no. Yeah. So acting yeah. isn't really my so bad. So how did the, how did the, the fashion programme that he was doing, was it What I Not love To Wear? Fashion. Or, you know, like it's called? What Not To Wear. Not to yeah, wear. I took over from Trini and Susanna. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I love clothes. I'm yeah. obsessed with clothes. Mm. I did uh, art and design at college before yeah. I became a singer, so I was always right. into that. Yeah. So design my own things yeah. and stuff like that. So that's normal for me. Yeah. Okay. You know, so... Mm. Everything you've seen me do, the book, writing the book, I'm on my next book now, okay. which is great. Um, everything I do is things that I'm passionate about. 
and, and I think that's what we, we are. Well, that's the best when, way, isn't it? You really actually be able to evolve. And, and, that's what know, we're supposed to do. Yeah. We're, we're here to evolve that's right. uh, or, or, or devolve. It's choose. Yeah. You know, you yeah. choose. You either devolve or you evolve. That's and right. to me, the only way you evolve is when you have diversity. Mm. You know, diversity gives us longevity. Right. It's as simple as that. It really does. And even if you, you go beyond yourself. Mm. You know, even, I mean, you, 27 years ago, you told me that I would be doing radio, telly and all this. I'd look at you and say, you're mad. I'm a singer. <laughs> <laughs> do that stuff, for God's sake. Get a grip. But actually, that's because I, you know, I try anything once. But if I make a complete idiot of myself, sorry about that. I'm not doing it again. She means strictly, idiot. Yeah, strictly come dancing. I was shocking on that. And oh my God, my dad called, thank you, God, God was good. I was going to look at it in YouTube. No, you won't Just look so and see what the shop My dad called me about. up and he said to me, <laughs> my dad called me and said, Misha, you've got a beautiful voice. <laughs> You know what that means, woman. You have a fantastic career. I'm so proud of you, but don't dance. Please. <laughs> don't do the dancing. Daddy, don't do the dancing, I guess. I was like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> So, you know, Lovely man. when you were 17, you were in the uh, Hollywood Beyond. Yes. Your first feature. That's right. And as you said, you you know, you wouldn't have ever thought that you was going to be doing all that you was doing now. I was 16 when I was point, with them. 16. 16. I was 16 with Hollywood Beyond on top of the pop wow. saying, what's the colour of money? Remember that? And yes. he had the dreads. Gosh. Mark, lovely guy. So when you were in that and, and on the stage doing all of that, did you think you'd actually get this far? Oh God, I was depressed when I was doing yeah. it. Because all I kept thinking, I want to be in the front, I want to be in the front. Oh, That's really? all I was thinking, yes! yes. Don't get twisted, I was yes. very, very driven. Mm. Like, I, honey, I knew what I wanted from the time I was, I was obsessed. Yes. Yes. I was telling people, I'm going to get a deal, you're going to see, I'm going to be the next big... Like, someone was telling me what I was like. Into a deal. Who I haven't seen for <laughs> years. <laughs> None of them once. I'm like, Jesus, man, she was so driven, man. God, and they were explaining what I was like, and I was cringing. I was like, oh my God, I was awful. I can't believe that was me. But you know, you need that drive yeah. to get there. Yeah, of course. Because you, you know, to. I came from the hood, so I needed to. Yeah. I was anxious, man. I was like, I've got to get out of here. Because <laughs> people ain't going to drive you out, you know? They want you to stay. No, you know what I mean? Like, it's amazing. But no, you have to have that, you know, that drive is what gets you there. Yeah. You know? It's will, you know? Okay. It's the will. It is the will. Remember, it's the thought. You the power. Thoughts, yeah. action. No, thought, words, the action. No, man. Thought, thought words, emotions. Oh, emotion, that's right. You've got to connect the emotion to the thought. And then the, the action. And then the action. That's right, you got it, girl. It's hardcore. Definitely. And that's it. manifestation right there. And that's you know how you what? get everything you want. Music runs in your family, because I know you've got a sister as well. Yeah, she's a big gospel. Yeah, yeah. Gospel. P. Paula. Yeah, yeah, P. Yeah. She's so religious. And, you know, love her. Bless her. She's a darling. We love she? her. She's, we love she's like Paula. me. We love We're the same. Paula. I'm just a taller version. <laughs> yeah. And a darker version. Amazing. She's really light. I'm really yes. dark. I'm yes. a dark. I'm a black woman. Beautiful voice, just like yourself. She's got a wicked voice. But she's just so religious. We love her. But, oh my God, she's trying to convert me all the time. Oh. And I'm just like, stop, well, give up. It happens. No, you but know, they've got this thing. It, no, way. but they've got this thing that, you know, they think that you get to a certain point and then you run back. You know, no, it ain't happening here, child. <laughs> I spent, listen, 15 years of my life I was in church. Mm. You think I'm running back there? No, yeah. God bless them, but no. Wow, wow. Well, even though it runs I'm in the spiritual, family. Spiritual, yeah, we're spiritual. spiritual. So we do need to tap into the spiritual. I'm all about the, the spirit, but I'm stuff. not about religion. But God bless her, she's very talented. Yeah, she is. She's absolutely great. amazing. She's very, she's well. very passionate. Well, you've also got other things going on in the family, like your cousin Chris Eubanks. Yeah, Chris. Who's yeah. recently had his son, Emily, yeah, being the champion. Chris Jr., yeah. Your children, yeah. have they ever expressed any. Yeah, one is doing acting, be... one is oh, with really? an acting agent, that's the big one, she's with an acting agent, okay. and uh, the little one she's loving, so, so she's but she don't want no music at no, all, the little no. one, nah, she ain't feeling it. So if she turns 17 so now, she's nine, but if she turns 17 now and she decides, mom, you know what, I've been singing in my bedroom, Listen, I'm, I'm leaving the country, I'm done telling her already, I'm out. <laughs> don't need no more artists in the family, please, <laughs> doctor, liar, anything, I'll take it. She's a zookeeper. I'll take anything. <laughs> Just no music, please. Why, why do you say that? Oh, the music business is too hard. Mm. It's too hard in every sense. There's no money in it anymore. It's done until the new cycle comes. We're, at, we're on the verge now. Going back to the vinyl days. Yeah, we're on the verge. It's coming back and it's coming yeah. back to credibility again, but yeah. it's still not there yet. Nearly. 
Nearly. We're yeah. getting there. People we're are getting a little bit sick of the crap. Think, while we've still got mm. YouTubes and we've got all those, yeah. we're still going to, you know, Sorry. Sorry. I know, I love you. you see what happens, innit? I'm catch you after the show, but find cold, exactly right? how it was going. We're here at the Riverbank in Nottingham with Misha Parrish. She's about to go on stage. So we're going to let her go and we'll catch up with her Yeah, I've got to fix my eyelashes. Stay tuned. <laughs> They're probably going to come off on stage anyway. See you in a bit. All right, babe, love you. <laughs> Bye, baby. Right, God bless you. Always good to see you. And you too. Bye, Talk hubby. After. Bye. Bye.